Hello students. In the previous session, we have uh, completed the study of the integrated farming, right? So, uh, other kinds of waste management, like uh, we have come across the solid waste management and uh, how to come over, overcome the problem of uh, uh, pollution created during the farming, especially uh, while making use of the uh, different types of chemical fertilizers etc right so for all that the best solution is integrated farming which also would yield a greater um, benefit even to the farmer right now let's move on to the next uh, aspect in this chapter that is the, the radioactive waste so let us try to understand what is radioactive waste and how is it created and how to get rid of this or what is the different ways what are the different ways of uh, disposal of radioactive waste so you you uh, obviously you will uh, know what is radioactivity you will know what how uh, why and how the radioactive waste is generated it is mainly generated due to the nuclear reactors right so initially when uh, nuclear reactors or uh, nuclear reactions were actually discovered and when they found out that the nuclear reactions in a huge scale like in the nuclear reactors could, ab could be able to be used for the production of electricity they thought that it is completely a pollution free method of generating electricity like the conventional methods of usage of the coal right so compared to that they thought that radioactivity must uh, will be the best ever way of producing electricity without causing any kind of pollution but later they realized that this is also uh, undergoes a, a very a big risk actually this also exposes us to a very uh, huge uh, kinds of risk especially when radioactive i mean the nuclear reactors they are under leakage or because because of some reason they if they get exploded okay so two such incidents actually happened okay we will study what are those two incidents in this uh, topic today see two very serious problems associated with the uh, radioactivity or especially the nuclear reactors are one is accidental leakage of the reactor the second one is safe disposal of radioactive waste so accidental leakage may be due to the explosion or just the leakage it can be right or the other ma major reason or other major uh, risk involved in this is safe disposal of radioactive waste because these radioactive waste they carry harmful radiations it cannot be disposed of like any other kind of waste just like how we dispose the solid waste uh, it can be neither buried under the soil it cannot be burnt right so it has to be disposed of in a particular way otherwise it will also cause even in the most inert condition also it has the capacity of causing lot of deformities lot of diseases right so it is too problematic so that is why it is also one of the major problems associated with this now you will look at look at this see this is actually the at pennsylvania these are the nuclear reactors that you are seeing and one of the nuclear reactor actually had a leakage right so this is actually known as the three mile island accident the three mile island accident that that was caused due to the partial meltdown of the reactor number two so three mile island is the name of the place the reactors are, have been placed there this is in pennsylvania in usa this happened on march 28 1979 so this was the first incident which made them realize which made the scientific community realize that this also can be a greater risk so we will we may be exposed to a high risk because of uh, the nuclear power reactors especially when they are under leakage so this is this is three mile island accident and there is one more that is called chernobyl disaster or chernobyl incident see on april 26 1986 around 1 23 am the reactor reactor number four had got had suffered a massive explosion 
so in the previous incident there were no casualties there were no deaths reported but this actually uh, caused a lot of death also a lot of casualties also because of a huge quantity of release of the nuclear material here right so this is chernobyl disaster so this was actually this is compared to the hiroshima nagasaki bombing so you know that american uh, planes actually dropped the nuclear bombs on the hiroshima nagasaki region of the japan right but this incident was even more powerful than that atomic bombing at hiroshima that means you can imagine how how uh, serious was this problem of chernobyl disaster so these two disasters these two incidents so made us realize about the seriousness of disposal and the careful handling of the nuclear reactors right so but how to dispose it it has been recommended that, that so the nuclear waste that is coming out of the nuclear reactors have to be treated well it has to be pre-treated and this pre-treated nuclear waste has to be packed in the metal containers with thick walls thick metal containers and it has to be packed it has to be uh, 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 you know uh, closed it has to be a closed chamber and it has to be buried deep under the ground how much deep 500 uh, meter deep below the earth surface and almost half a kilometer below the earth surface we have to bury it within a closed container in a metal container okay so this method of dis disposal so it is okay this is a, a feasible right now because we don't have any other methodology in order to dispose the nuclear waste so any other method that we uh, usually employ to dispose any other kind of waste will not be suitable for a nuclear waste disposal and that is why this is okay now but but still there is a great opposition even for this method of disposal of the nuclear waste because there are complaints that the nuclear waste might melt down under the ground because of the high temperature and when we have enclosed it in a metal container so slowly because of mineralization process after after a period of time this may be mixed with the soil and again the poisonous effects or hazardous effects of these chemicals may be affecting to the people who are residing in that area right so but still we have no other uh, what method of disposal this is the only safe method as uh, uh, which has been employed today for nuclear disposal right so the greenhouse effect sorry this actually the information uh, it has been wrongly put here so this is about uh, the nuclear waste management and uh, the nuclear disasters that were that had caused in the Chernobyl and in the Three Mile Island incident. Now moving forward for the greenhouse effect and global warming. Now the information is relevant. So the greenhouse effect and global warming is yet another very important and most interesting and also it is quite important for you to understand because see this is the need of the hour to understand for all of us and act for the nature we have already act already acted very much against the nature but now it is the need of the hour in order to act for the nature in order to nurture the nature so what is greenhouse effect what is global warming see if you have visited the nurseries the plant nurseries nodir bodhaniwo and there the plantlets the small plantlets which have been potted in small pots they will be kept in a greenhouse on the glass house madirtare so this glass house may not be uh, particularly using the glass material but it can be uh, maybe it may be made up of the fiber material which is transparent right sometimes mesh green colored mesh so this material that is used actually for what purpose is this should be transparent for the light light should be allowed to fall or enter into that chamber and also the heat is entering into that chamber but light may be reflected back but heat will not be reflected back heat will be stored heat will be held back into that chamber because that chamber that is made it is opaque for the reflection of heat back into the atmosphere once heat heat radiations heat cannot be left out 
right so that is why and why why such environment is created for the maintenance of the plantlets there because the plants young plantlets they can grow very well under very high temperatures under slightly high temperatures and flowering can be also fastened hastening of flowering anta neevu kaltidiri in the plant growth and development especially while making the study of hormones right so usually neevu innondu you can you, you can easily correlate this particular aspect me maavina hannanna usually in the mango season what did what what they do is they take all the mangoes and keep in a closed chamber and they they see that no air is entering into that chamber so they will try to maintain as much as dry and as much as warmer temperature conditions there so that the ripening process will be fastened similar process the warmer temperatures actually make the plant to grow faster to flower faster to ripe faster so that is the reason why the greenhouse greenhouses are maintained in the nursery now why are we discussing the uh, greenhouse uh, greenhouse uh, or the topic of the greenhouse about the nurseries and all is because greenhouse effect anta helidre it is nothing but the same but but we are actually correlating with the entire atmosphere of the earth what is happening is see you know that around our earth there are different layers of the atmosphere you might have learnt in the geography in your lower classes there are different layers lithosphere is a uh, hydrosphere that is the aquatic surface of the earth right and uh, the different spheres the stratosphere thermosphere exosphere idella spheres barutte right so now what is actually happening here is there is a cloud there is a, a circle of clouds around the earth earth's atmosphere now these clouds what do they do what do they do they will become partially opaque for the heat radiations that have been entered into the earth's atmosphere earth na atmosphere walagade bartiruvantaha heat radiations anna they will they will capture those heat radiations on the earth's surface itself and that is why the earth's temperature will be maintained warmer in condition and it is because of the greenhouse effect the temperatures of the earth are warmer otherwise it could not have been possible possible for many organisms to survive on this earth the temperature could have been very or extremely cold up to minus 18 degrees celsius ashtu temperature nalli tumba animals galige tumba organisms galige survive madlik aagtirilla so this approximately around 50 degrees celsius 15 degrees celsius of temperature in the average temperature that is mainly because of the greenhouse effect now see what is greenhouse effect it's a naturally occurring phenomenon that is responsible for heating of earth surface and atmosphere without greenhouse effect the average temperature of the earth would have been very a chilly minus 18 degrees celsius rather than the present average that is 15 degrees celsius that is what i try to explain here now look at this picture to understand what is exactly greenhouse effect so you will see these are these are the different layers of the uh, atmosphere of the earth right so you will see the greenhouse gases in a particular layer here there are different layers of the earth uh, atmosphere and you will see the greenhouse gases ad yavudella greenhouse gases anta na next slide alli nodona but now what is happening is see that the the radiations from the sun the solar radiations are entering into the atmosphere earth atmosphere they are falling on the surface of the earth right and a part of this around 1/4 of the of these radiations they get reflected back into the atmosphere even before they enter nodi clouds na clouds ninda age enagutte ant helidre illi greenhouse gases enide adu cloud formation maadkondirutte so these clouds they will not let them allow they will not let them uh, into the atmosphere or to the to reach the surface of the earth around 1/4 of the radiations are being reflected back into the external atmosphere or external space they will never enter around more than half of the radiations which reach the surface of the earth on reaching the surface see they, uh, once again it is reflected back into the atmosphere a part of the radiations is also absorbed solar energy absorbed by the surface of the earth and that is why the earth surface will be kept warmer right and you will also see that see illi earth mele biddu reflect aagtiruvanta radiations anna nodidre see 
a part of these radiations which are reflected back once again you will see here the red lines so once again they will be reflected back to the surface see they, they fall on the surface of the earth they reflect back to the atmosphere once again they reflect back to the surface see once again they reflect back to the atmosphere why this is happening is the gas molecules present in the greenhouse gas layer the gas molecules present in the atmosphere which form the clouds these clouds will not let all of these radiations to get out of this atmosphere to all of these radiations to get out of the uh, what the uh, earth's atmosphere and that is why a part of these heat radiations especially the long wavelengths of infrared radiations they will be so repeatedly they will be reflecting back back to the surface of the earth in a they are, they are uh, uh, repeatedly they are reflecting back to the surface of the earth and because of this the temperature of the earth gets increased so this is what is the process of global warming that means how the temperature of the earth is maintained warmer up to average 15 degrees celsius now so how is this happening is because of this process so you can read see the solar radiation passes through the clear atmosphere this is first one net incoming solar radiation see uh, of this solar total solar radiation a one fourth of this is reflected back so in no one fourth and a bit to any day that is a net incoming solar radiation otherly some of the solar radiation is reflected by the atmosphere and earth surface that is one fourth now solar energy is absorbed by the earth surface and warms it absorption it is maybe because of the photosynthetic majority of the radiations are absorbed by the surface of the earth mainly because of the process of photosynthesis right and some of the infrared radiations absorbed and re-emitted by the greenhouse molecules the the, the direct effect is uh, the warming of the surface of the earth and the troposphere right so in healthy that and healthy right so the infrared radiations they are getting reflected back partly they they get the net outgoing infrared radiations they get out of the atmosphere but not all of those radiations are getting out of the atmosphere partially they reflect back to the surface of the earth once again they will be reflected back to the atmosphere but they only partly they will move out and again a part of them will come back to the surface of the earth and this whole process actually leads to the increase in the temperature of the surface of the earth right this is what is called greenhouse effect and it is very much essential for the purpose of the survival of all the living organisms on the surface of the earth so greenhouse effect is not bad remember this right moving on to the next slide so greenhouse gases so in this picture greenhouse gases and you know layer node three let us understand in the next picture see what all the greenhouse gases and in which composition are present they are present in the surface of the i mean in the atmosphere of the earth see nitrogen oxides CFCs, chloro chlorofluorocarbons, 20% of the methane and the majority of this will be carbon dioxide, around 60% of the carbon dioxide. See, this can be important, one more question, Illy greenhouse effect and reno, that can be one important question, right? Greenhouse effect and reno to go and Chernobyl incident, but two, uh, three mile island incident to go one or two more question. Disposal hege matter in nuclear waste to go Then moving on here, greenhouse gases, the composition, yava gas, yes to composition, live, adu kuda go 20% of the methane, 14% of CFCs, 6% of N2O, and 60% of the carbon dioxide. So you must be knowing this, right? Now, global warming. See, after understanding the concept of the uh, uh, greenhouse effect, now global warming and the head of whether they are same or different, actually greenhouse effect only in process there, the same process, it is because of the pollution that we are making, it is because of the lot of greenhouse gases that are being generated because of the lot of pollution activities by human beings. So, the greenhouse gases, the clothes anywhere that has become very thick in a particular layer of the atmosphere and because of which lot of heat is being captured on the surface of the earth so avashyakade iddadakkinta jaasti temperature in aagtide capture aagtide on the surface of the earth and this increased temperature because of the increase in the level of the greenhouse gases 
is what is called as global warming. See, you can look at the definition here. Extreme increase in the heat on Earth due to an increased level of the greenhouse gases is referred to as global warming. Okay, so greenhouse effect, but in Akhtide, because of the pollutants being released in the form of greenhouse gases, they form very thick clouds, and these thick clouds they will not let. I mean, they will uh, they will uh, increase the temperature uh, temperature on the surface of the earth by not letting any heat radiations to go out or very little amount of the heat radiations to go out. As a result of which extreme temperature increase increase takes place and that is what is called global warming remember this so how much it has been increased as per the data given in the textbook during the past century the temperature of the earth has been increased by 0.6 degrees celsius so in one uh, past century in one century 0.6% uh, of the temperature of the earth has been increased okay and in different di different geographical locations it has it will be different but overall when we consider it will be 0.6 uh, degree and it is only in the last three decades because of industrialization because of more and more vehicles that we are ma making use of so all this modernization that we are making actually is causing lot of global warming right so what are the hazardous or bad effects or harmful effects of global warming global warming and takshtani mege talel barate see a polar bear sitting on one piece of the snow or ice uh, ice rock and completely surrounded by the water right see that is what actually happens see this leads to serious deleterious uh, changes in the environment resulting in odd climatic changes like el nino effect See El Nino effect. Nimma ka textbook na liyesh. Idhar bage explanation hi la. But I'll just try to give a a little uh, brief explanation about this. El Nino effect means so this is an effect of uh, variation in the pressure that is created in the sea, especially in the Pacific Ocean and in the Mediterranean Sea. And because of the pressure created there in the Mediterranean Sea and the sea in the Pacific Ocean, what happens is so it is going to bring the unseasonal rain. in different countries of asia right even india receives unseasonal rain because of the el nino effect right so chandamarutha kuda ant karitivi and because of this lot of odd climatic changes also take place so uh, the unseasonal change uh, unseasonal rain itself will cause a lot of havoc right so loss of agricultural crops agirbodu athwa uh, the life cycle of many organisms will be disturbed because of the unseasonal or odd climatic changes that is one thing and this increased temperature will also lead to the melting of polar ice caps including the polar ice caps or the Himo himalayan snow caps also right so when the polar ice caps or athwa himadalli himada formal iruvanta neeru karagi hogta idre obviously because of that the water level rises water level in the water bodies and in the sea rises and definitely water will start entering on the land area and this causes floods in many areas and the submerging of coastal areas every year you will see during the rainy season usually in the coastal areas nim yen keltiri kadal koreta anta keltirtiri alva so this usually happens this is not today this is this has been happening since many years but so every year they say so millimeters only the sea is coming closer to the earth and maybe in a few hundred years maybe in a few thousand years complete coastal area may be submerged under the sea right and this is all the effect of the global warming right so you can look at this picture see uh, many of the species are actually losing their habitats because of the global warming especially the penguins and the polar bears which will survive which can survive only in the polar regions like this so they are actually losing their homes and this is actually causing the extinction of many species which are also associated with this so many plants many animal species many microbial species that we are going to lose because of this one now the next concept that is the ozone depletion in the stratosphere that we can consider in the next class